This episode would not be possible without Anchor. It's free and the easiest way to make a podcast. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to Lead Today with me, Kalina. Let's talk leadership. Welcome to another episode of Lead Today. I've been thinking a lot about the structure of this show, and I always have notes, I always have a plan, there are these key takeaways, and I got a text message from a dear friend of mine, Sarah, who said, you know, I really loved the episode where you talked about getting married and you spoke from the heart, and I was thinking about that because I listened to Rachel Brathen, Brathen, podcast yoga girl and they're literally it's literally called conversations from the heart and she doesn't take notes she doesn't do interviews and I get that she's got a million plus followers and is probably a little bit different in her popularity but there's something really authentic and nice about just being able to speak with you about what's kind of current for me what's on my mind and hope that in sharing where I'm at there may be resonance with you and where you're at and maybe you disagree with me and spark something or maybe you're going through exactly the same thing and so that sparks something but it really got me thinking about authenticity and I'm actually going through and editing my book which has been a whole oh man it's been a whole process like two two plus years now Um, granted when I had my car accident and sustained a traumatic brain injury that put a bit of a wrench in my timeline and I'm being gentle with myself about that oh talk about authenticity I think it's so challenging to say that we need more time more rest that we're not going to finish you know by the deadline and there's this big consequence and it's scary for the people that have supported me for example it's scary to think about what they are going to think and that's actually a really interesting connection back to authenticity because when I'm so focused or we if we focus so strongly on what everyone else is going to say being authentic becomes really hard and so I almost see it as an equation in my head this kind of you know judgment I don't know the degree of perceived or the fear of judgment is what's going to dictate, you know, equals like your action (laughs) in correlation to whatever would be the authentic thing on your mind or in your heart or the thing you want to do. And so, yeah, it's kind of this, like, you'll only act if the, the the perceived reward, like, or the anticipated reward is bigger than your fear of judgment and of persecution or ridicule or being outcast, which makes a ton of sense, right? We want to be lo- we all want to belong. We want to be loved. And if the people close to us don't approve, that can be a hard that can be a hard one for us. And oh, do I ever know that? I mean, I think my whole adult life has been me just knocking up against what other people expect from me and saying, yeah, that's not going to be it. And that's why I've been, you know, traveling for, man, I mean, it's going on six years, seven years, eight years. Yeah. I mean, it's been, so since middle of 2014 and we're in 2021. So let's say, you know, seven years or so. And what I've learned, I think, is that actually I'm going to disappoint people no matter what. (laughs) And that's, I don't know if that's a good way to look at it, but it's, it somehow 
helps me in feeling better about making sure that I'm okay first because no matter if I'm traveling or if I'm home or if I'm married or I'm not or I have kids or I'm not or I do the thing my friends want or not, no matter what, there's going to be something to pick apart and judge about the way I'm conducting myself. And so I think if I, and th this has taken time and I'm not perfectly, I don't have it perfectly down pat yet, but certainly if I'm, if I'm aligned and I'm clear that it's what I need to do and I believe it's right and my faith believes it's right, so my connection to something bigger than myself, you know, God, universe, source, whatever you want to call it, I think it's this connection to the fact that I don't control all the shots. I don't want to control all the shots. I'm this kind of small little blip on this planet and I just... You know, I want to be healthy, I want to be happy, I want to be safe, I want love, but I certainly don't control everything. I can have goals, goals are good. I set a lot of goals, I help people set goals in my work, it's a good thing. But we can only set a vision and allow it if it's God's will, you know, if it's meant, I mean meant to be feels like you just set this goal and you sit there and you wait for it to happen. And that's not necessarily what I'm saying, right? It's not like, okay, set this goal and then just sit and wait. And if it's meant to be, it'll, it'll just pop into your lap and you don't have to do a single thing. I don't think it's that. I think it's more like if you're taking authentic action, if you're following what feels right to you, your conscience, your, that inner voice saying, mm, you know, take the day off. And I mean, if it's every day, most of us, right, we're not going to do that every day. But if it's every day for a long time, that's something to really look at, right? If your body is constantly telling you to slow down and take a rest and stop or, you know, when you're a kid and if you had a test or, you know, there's a teacher you didn't like or a bully or something, you would, or you would say, you know, I have a stomach ache. I can't go to school. You want to avoid it. I think that nagging sense, whether it's physical or mental, like if something's really tugging at you, Tugging at your heart, tugging at your body, tugging at your mind. Like if it's just, if it keeps pulling at you, I think it's worth it to look at that. <laughs> I mean, not a revelation, but we just stuff so many things under the rug and say, that'll go away, oh, it's not that important, oh, whatever, okay, I need to focus on something else. I shouldn't feel that, I shouldn't do that, I shouldn't say that, should, 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 and it's just like, Man, this is exhausting. Like inauthenticity and pushing away what you really want to need in your true self or whatever you want to, your personality, like whatever you want to call this, like pushing it down and not being you sucks. Like it sucks and you just feel, you know, like a shriveled little raisin. Like you feel like you're not allowed to be. And when I think about that, there are so many times when I was in Switzerland where that felt like the case. It felt like a shriveled raisin. I felt like this shell of myself that was not allowed to be big and loud and strong or sad and alone and not want to socialize. Like I just could not. I felt like I was in a straitjacket and I wasn't allowed to be me so many times. And do you know why? Well, obviously because of what, you know, it was my mind. It was the box that I created for myself within that environment and that environment made me feel a certain way and so it's not just the environment in terms of like it's not the environment's fault I'm not here to blame somebody or something or somewhere but I noticed this stark contrast from being in Switzerland and what I made that mean what I said that was in my head because I was alone because it was a foreign country with a foreign language and I didn't really understand it or resonate with it or the culture and I felt that I couldn't make friends and COVID was a part of that and so COVID is the you know like finding just different excuses honestly to not integrate myself into the community there not get involved seclude myself and that's so not who I am and so it's really interesting the little steps that took me down this road of being inauthentic and how tired it made me how quiet it made me how recluse I felt like I just wanted to be a hermit and I felt so bitter and angry and annoyed and not wanting just so not myself there are glimpses of my authentic kind of Kalina thing 
but it was few and far between. I was so frustrated, and I put so much on Bab, on my husband, like, and I, you know, felt like it was everybody else's responsibility, and I couldn't get myself into the mode of, you know, meditating, or yoga, or even take the dog for a walk. Like, there's so many days where it's like, I don't want to do anything. And that is so not me. I'm an adventurer at heart, right? I'm just, I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to play, I want to do stuff, I want to swim, I want to go for walks on the beach. Like, this is what I want. Let me, oh, it was just so, I could feel myself closing off. And that, to me, that, that whole description I just gave you, to me, is such a clear example in my mind of being inauthentic, of not letting your heart show. And today I'm joining you from a lovely Hako, Costa Rica. And it's actually raining really hard outside. It's rainy season. Yeah, I look outside and it's like a downpour. It's really warm, but it's this downpour. And the ocean is nearby, just outside of the co-working space that I'm in. And I just went swimming a couple hours ago and walked the dog and had a steak. And I'm recording this feeling like me. I feel lighter. I am admittedly still a bit tired from the jet lag, I will say. Eight hour time difference will get you in the first couple days. But my heart feels open and full, free. I feel safe. I feel like me like I just want to sing and dance around and play with the dog in the sand I want to play volleyball I want to swim like I was catching waves it was so fun I'm not an avid surfer yet need some lessons usually the first time I tried surfing was in cost uh in Colombia in uh where was I Santa Marta I think oh it was I, I was tragically bad like it was but I only went out a couple times and it, I had to go out so far. I had to swim out and get out so far to then come back in. And it was just like, all I can tell you is washing machine, right? Like just tumbled, tumbled in from the, tried to get on the board, did not happen. Me and the board, you know, split <laughs> across the beach, sand in every place that's humanly possible. And my bathing suit top was like, down to my belly button. So the surf instructor was like, mm, and he put his board in front of, in front of himself to block me and let me pull it back up. It was embarrassing to say the least. <clears throat> but, 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 I feel like I'm in the same zone that I was in when I was, you know, in Colombia or traveling around. And I mean, Anybody that knows me like you do will know that the beach is my sweet spot. So if I'm near sand, everything is so much better. So that's a clear indication because Switzerland, while it has stunning lakes and mountains, has no sea. There's no ocean going on. And that is such a force for me. Like I feel... Oh, I love the power of the waves. I love the sound of the waves. Like, I've been working outside in this cafe earlier today before recording this. Um, if I recorded it there, you would have heard very loud, amazing music. But oh, hearing the sound of the waves, looking at them, palm trees, sand, it's just... I feel like it's me. Like, I was meant... I don't know. I was born in Canada. For God's sake, like it's cold, icy. It's hot in the summer, granted, right? But I don't know. I was meant to be a beach bum for sure. So that's part of it. I'm happy to I'm happy to be in my natural habitat of sorts, if you will. I, I enjoy the water. But I just feel, you know, I've got a car here, I feel autonomous, I feel like I can go down the street, I can meet people, I can talk to people, everybody's super friendly. Um, this hotel, people are, you know, it's like a nomad kind of place, so everybody's really chill, there are people either working or hanging out by the pool, people will talk to you, like, it's just so my element, and I just want to 
meet people and explore and enjoy. So that didn't serve as my Costa Rica advertisement. I don't know what will. I'm not being paid to sell you to come on a trip here, although we do have an extra bedroom. So if you happen to want to fly down for two weeks and you hear this like instantaneously, come on down. But um, yeah, it's this notion of authenticity being very much so linked to judgment and then also linked to opening your heart. Like I, in examining this characteristic, and again, so I started chatting about my book that there is a chapter on authenticity in the book and I sort of, I had to rewrite some parts and edit some parts for my editor. We're resubmitting, to, we've got about, I don't know, 50 publishers interested or something. And, and so, but we need to complete the manuscript and it needs to be pretty polished for the really great publishers to have a look. Secretly or not so secretly, I am, my heart is like dying for Hay House to accept my book. That would be my dream. I just love most of what they produce. I mean, I haven't read it all, so I can't say everything, but so many, I mean, Louise Hay herself is just legendary. Um, I would love to be published by Hay House. Oh, my dream. So, yeah, the, the book on, the chapter on authenticity really was tripping me up. I couldn't place my finger on it. Like, I haven't felt like I can articulate what it even is to myself, let alone in writing, because I just felt so, I felt like I wasn't in that place. I couldn't connect to the feeling. Like, I, I mean, rationally, I know what authenticity is, and I knew it. It's not like Switzerland robbed me of my understanding. I had experienced it before, obviously, and there are moments of authenticity in Switzerland, but I didn't give myself the green light, the permission. I didn't allow myself to be authentic there because of a fear of judgment, because of the local culture being very different from how I am. And so over time, of course, we adapt to our environments and that's actually a very good thing biologically, of course, because we want to fit in back to belonging and love, back to you know not wanting to be this outlier. But then in the final weeks of being there, I just sort of thought, oh, forget it. I'm not gonna put on this face. And of course we need to, in some instances, look at the filter that we're being through the lens that we are operating you know like okay if you go to lunch with your grandma or you go to a job interview obviously the job interview you want to kind of sharpen up a little bit like you're not going to show up in jeans and flip-flops probably depending on where you are um it, you know and just kind of shoot the breeze with as you would with your grandma and be informal you might want to Articulate yourself a little bit more succinctly and show up with some research being done or some talking points or some questions you have for the company and be prepared. So that doesn't mean that you're being disingenuous, right? It means that you're preparing for the scenario and the context. I think behaving in a context specific fashion is actually necessary. But you can choose how you do it, right? Because everyone will approach that interview differently based on who they are. So like, it's this authentic approach toward the context that makes us unique. Because there are some social norms and confines by way, via which we operate in different contexts. Like we know that we can behave in certain ways. But then how we behave within that sort of, within the parameters of the situation is where our authenticity shines, right? Because we don't all do things the same way, even if there's a convention. I don't know, I'm just thinking of eating a hamburger because I just had lunch <laughs> and Bab had a hamburger. But, you know, like there's so many different ways to eat a hamburger and none of them are inherently wrong, but there's certain sort of parameters around how you would do that. And I think that what I recognized is that rather than taking the parameters of the situation in Switzerland and saying, okay, within this culture, within these parameters, how do I operate? Instead of doing that, I just sort of said, oh, the way that everyone here operates within the cultural parameters does not resonate with me. And so I'm just going to shut myself down because I don't fit. I can't operate in the same way under these parameters. Like I can't do what everyone else is doing within the context. Instead of saying, okay, 
people are a bit more introverted, well, a lot more introverted depending on where in the world you are. Um, they take longer to open up to you. They open up more by association. So if you are introduced via a friend, they'll be more open and trusting toward you initially. Like figuring out the social norms, saying, okay, here are the parameters. So let me leverage the local connections I do have. Let me integrate myself. I mean, I was in a couple of local communities, like women's groups and stuff. And I just never kind of, I never even met anyone. Like I was in the groups online. I just never went to meet anyone. My business chiefly was in, ex in an accelerator in Zurich. Never met anybody from the cohort, even though, though they were in the same city and the cohort ended up being virtual, but you know. But I just felt like I didn't fit in. And so because I decided that I didn't feel like I fit in, I didn't find a place to fit in. You know, COVID or no COVID, like restrictions, lockdowns or no, like there were still ways that I could have operated within the parameters of the environment of the social norms and you know un, I guess implied rules or sort of implicit rules that people kind of operate under there I could have but I decided that I didn't know how to operate in that sandbox and so I didn't and not and even that right not being adaptable another skill that I talk about in the book but even not being adaptable it's like who that is so not me like adaptability and authenticity are probably like two core values of mine it's like I want to show up as me even if it's good or bad or whatever's going on like I want to be able to be myself and I want to be able to adapt you know like traveling on the road living out of suitcases for years 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 like backpacks or suitcases like that is who I am I adapt something doesn't work I figure it out like I you know, oh my god, like in Fiji, there was, I remember in Fiji, I was there with Emma, the Asawa Islands, oh, I miss Emma dearly, um, and so being on the Asawa Islands, the island that we were on didn't have Wi-Fi, like there, was not, there was not even cell phone signal, and so there were these fishing boats and fishermen that came regularly to transport stuff to the island, and we were staying on this camp, which is beautiful, by the way, I mean, just more, more stars than I've ever seen, um, and of course it was in, you know, the southern part of the world. And so being there, the stars were completely different from like northern Canada where I've seen stars or in the north of Brazil where I've seen beautiful stars. Jerry Cotuara in Brazil doesn't have street lights, so you'll see really great, beautiful stars there by the sea. Oh, with amazing sand dunes. But so being in the Asawas, there was no Wi Fi. And what did I do? I mean I had to teach a class. I was teaching a coaching course. And so three days a week, no fail, I paid the boat guys, the fishing boat guys, to drive me to another island, which was like 30 minutes or something, 25, 30 minutes away, to get me Wi-Fi signal. You would do the class at a hotel that was on another island. It's like, that's me when I think about me and my core, you know? But figure it out, resourceful, adaptable, and definitely freaking authentic. And, I mean, what's the takeaway? It's like, okay, I was in an environment I didn't feel comfortable, big deal. Like, I kind of, when I talk, I, I'm always thinking, like, okay, so what, so what, so what? I guess it's from my English teachers or public speaking experience where it's like, okay, get to the point, like, have a point. I always feel like I have to have a point or, you know, the moral of the story. And as I said when I began this episode, I didn't really think of a moral of the story. Like, I didn't have a, <laughs> didn't really have a moral of the story, but... When I come to think of it now, after examining this alongside you, I would say the moral of the story is that that's sort of like a an indicator, like a, like a barometer or a gauge. And I guess any quality that we want to embody is, you know, like our core values, whatever qualities we want to embody that we feel resonate with who we are and are really important to us. Like if it's being strategic or you know, being introverted and actually that, that, you know, that's really important to you. Whatever qualities you want to embody, responsible, meticulous, fun, adventurous, studious, whatever, you know, loving, whatever qualities we want to embody, I think when we, if we start feeling shitty, that means that we're not showing up as that person you know and it's so it's interesting and I do mention this in the book as well and I don't want to just 
verbalize the whole book you're gonna have to read it <laughs> but um, there's a really great book by James Clear called Atomic Habits and he talks about essentially when you want to build a new habit you need to go to the level of identity and so just setting a goal or kind of trying to do this willpower thing you can do it but it sort of runs out right like whenever you've done a diet and you kind of restrict yourself and you feel like you're so you just want that chocolate cake just because you can't have it we all know like he says it doesn't work and we all know kind of you know not not sustainable in the long run and so his thesis is essentially go to the identity level say that you're a runner and then do things that you believe runners do which is like so simple but it's just an explosion in my mind because it's like yeah so if i'm authentic if i'm an authentic person what would an authentic person do in this situation whatever it is what would a kind person what would a patient person what would a um, loving person studious person responsible person meticulous whatever kind of words are coming up for you like what would they do in this scenario and if you're constantly moving away from it definite cause for concern um, as I have noted and you know environment does matter to me at least some people don't care like some people are just great anywhere they go and they can adapt and I guess I'm as adaptable as I want to say I am environment still gets to me to whatever degree um, and it definitely influences how I feel and so I think the moral of this story is if you're feeling crappy check yourself on if you're embodying the things that you say are important to you are you being the runner like in your day-to-day -day actions because all the things that I would describe myself as if I look at my day-to-day -day actions in Switzerland they were not aligned at all no friends no hanging out with people no having fun no adaptability rarely traveling when traveling like ugh, too many plans and rules and it just felt like stuffy and that's not because it has to be that way it's because I made it that way because I didn't follow what I wanted to do or myself or what I knew to be right my conscience and it was out of a fear of judgment and a fear of not belonging or being considered weird or not going with the flow or the the way people wanted me to be there that was not right and it's not right because it was perceived also like nobody sat me down and said Kalina you know you need to follow the conventions of Switzerland or else it's going to be really problematic like I didn't have this speaking to I mean I did have people say you know Swiss people are not as open initially and you're going to need to give them time and they're not as trusting so you know take it easy you're this quote-unquote American which I'm Canadian but you know North American culture like pushy or too open too extroverted too forthcoming it's too much and that's what I felt like there too much and it's like I don't think I'm an abrasive I mean I don't think so I don't think I'm an abrasive annoying loud boisterous person to the point of being distracting to people in their day-to-day -day lives I think I'm just friendly and charismatic extroverted open I mean extroverted oh okay that's a whole other discussion because this whole extroverted introverted like you get energy from being around people or you get energy from being alone like I think oh, I love being around people but I need to be alone to recharge my batteries I love alone time I love 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 being alone just like watch a movie or journal or do some of my things like I love being alone and I need it if I'm around a lot of people so either I've been kind of miscategorized as an intro as an extrovert my whole life or it's a spectrum or I think we all even if we're extroverted with other people which is just talkative open lively and I do get a kick out of that I think we all need alone time and it's kind of like a sliding scale and a spectrum just like everything else in life right where it's like okay what's your what's the barometer there like is it you know 70 30 or 20 80 or like 50 50 like what's up do you need you know 50 percent extroverted time and 50 percent introverted activities or is it 
more one way or the other way. And so I think thinking about it that way is far more resourceful, like just more helpful to me than like, oh, you're this and putting me in the box. It's like, okay, it doesn't help me to say I'm extroverted and then it just means I have to be around people all the time and then I get bitter and resentful. It's like, no, I don't need to be around people all the time just because I enjoy it. It's like I enjoy a lot of things. I don't want to do them 12 hours a day, right? And that's another thing, man, like being able to just say, I don't like that. I don't want that. No, that's so flipping hard. Like, oh my God, I don't know what it is about showing up and just, that's another thing in Switzerland. I didn't feel like I could say no. Like I had to be this nice girl and some, oh fuck. Like it was some kind of crazy persona. And the thing is, it's not like I was trying to be fake. I didn't feel like I had permission. I didn't feel like I could because I felt like it was too abrasive. To say, no, I don't want that. No, I'm not okay with that. No, I'm not going there. No, I'm not doing that. Or yes, you know, I'm, I'm getting a car. I'm getting an SUV, even though you disagree with it because it's not environmentally friendly compared to taking the train. Like, I didn't feel like I could dissent against people's opinions. It's like, since when? Nobody is ever going to agree with everything you say. Like, in what relationship have you ever had? Like, I've never had a relationship where I didn't potentially really love the person, but also say, you know what, like, I completely disagree with you here. We're just going to have to agree to disagree. Or we can talk about it, but I still, like, even after listening to you and opening myself up to new information, I'm not convinced and I'm not going in that direction. Like, a big deal. Like, whoever decided that we had to shield people from their own emotions to not step on their toes? And I'm not obviously talking about being just, like, a jerk, right? Like, don't be a jerk. Don't be an asshole just to, like, stir up shit. Like, that's not what we're talking about, obviously. I hope, you know, come on. Like, be a nice grown-up. But you don't have to cushion people from your own decisions. You don't have to be shameful for your own damn decisions. Like I'm doing the, I'm getting the damn SUV because I want an SUV. I feel safer in it because I had a car accident because I sustained a traumatic brain injury. Okay. Because it's so <laughs> I feel safer and I'm going to do it. And it's my choice. You know, like God, and it's not meant to be rude. It's not meant to be rude. Or condemning anyone else. Or, you know, I'm not judging anyone else. Like, go ahead and drive your moped or take the train or walk or bicycle. Like, do you. Do what you gotta do. I'm not here to judge you. But, for God's sake, don't insulate, you know, who you are in the fear of judgment from other people who are not even going to be impacted by your decision. Oh, to say that out loud. Like, it's, it's not for anybody to decide for us. And historically, I've been very good at saying, you know, this is my choice for me because I'm the one that has to live with it every day. So I just hope that you're making decisions for yourself every day not to be a selfish asshole but to be a considerate person toward yourself because if you are not being considerate toward yourself if you are being disingenuous or inauthentic closed off heart you know shut down that's not cool for you or for anyone around you Because I can assure you I have not been a peach to be around the past few months. I've found very little joy. I've been in a dark hole. And so nobody benefited from me not shining the way that I do. I just got something in my head that I was protecting people from something in the way that I'm being. But nobody was protected. It just impacted me negatively. And put a dark cloud over myself. So, you know, I mistakenly thought that by playing small and not shining too bright or talking too loud or doing too much, 
that I was going to protect myself from something. And lo and behold, I'm sure everybody there still judged me. They still judged the SUV. They still judged the fact that I eat meat. They still judged the fact that I'm loud or louder or more forthcoming and open and talkative. They still judged me, even when I went from 100% to 20% or 10%. They judged me because I was recluse, because I wasn't being social. They judged me. They are going to judge you too. But really, judgment, I think, is just people projecting onto you what it is that they are suffering with. And so what could I have done? I probably could have been a support to them if I had reframed this and been in the space to say, man, these people could probably use a good laugh (laughs) and a friend and maybe a conversation. And obviously, you know what? If you're not up to it, you're not up to it. I wasn't up to it for months. Months. So fine. But I really hope if this, if you're somehow listening to this, and there's, you know, there's a sign and you're like, man, I've been so, I've been playing so small in this part of my life because I just don't want to get in shit. I don't want people, I don't want to fail. I don't want people to judge me. I don't want to be wrong. It's like, so what? People barely remember what they ate for lunch, let alone they're going to care what it is you did. And if they do, let them harp on you. It's like, oh my God, go, you will already be moving on to the next thing. So if something you do doesn't work out, Let them talk, let them judge, let them, let them, let them make you the topic of conversation. Because, well, you've got other shit to do. (laughs) You don't have to sit in it, sit in your stew as well, you know? I mean, okay, it's not a cop out to not learn. Right? I'm not saying like, okay, I'm learning from this experience. I'm learning from the way that I behaved and the things that troubled me and the challenges I had. Like I'm sitting here unraveling it with you saying, here's where I went wrong. Here are the things I can take responsibility for. Here's how I brought this upon myself. Like here's how I contributed to this, right? I'm not just sitting here going Switzerland sucks and this is all the place's fault. Like that's so not true. But at the same time, to learn from the scenario There's no use in harping on the fact that these 20 people or 30 people or 100 people or however many people or two people, one person. Like it's usually, and that's a funny thing, right? It's not usually 100 people that are judging you. It's one or two or three people that you really hold in high esteem, whether it's your parents or your partner or your friends, your close friend, right? A work colleague, your boss, like somebody's judging you where you're like, oh, I have to care what they think because they are X to me. Right, whatever. They are this particular relation. And I think that's one thing that really helped me was traveling allowed me to sort of distance myself from that. So if I distance myself from the judgment, I think it's what helped me to have a bit of a stronger shell around myself. But this is where my other learning is, is that the moment I put myself back in that environment or back in an environment of sorts where I don't have the physical distance and the armor of that distance, let's say, the protection of the fact that I'm not in the proximity to, I'm not in proximity to the people that are judging me and then I'm letting that in. I think, what do I think? I think that in making that space physical space from the people that I felt judged by most or I held in some sort of esteem to allow them to influence my behavior and my perception of myself my self-worth and my dignity and my authenticity like those people I think it's going to take a few things to really bolster myself So that in being in physical proximity with them, it can be okay. But you know what? There are certain people where it just might not be. And so maybe putting yourself, you know, not right in the crosshairs of that experience is a start. I think that's for me a start. Until you can sort of take that emotional charge out of the equation. You know, it's just so emotionally charged and then it's like, well... 
yeah, I can't, I can't reckon with this as close as it is to me. It's so close to me that I don't have the perspective to see. So I think the distance does create something strong. And I think that small doses, it's like, I don't know, caffeine or alcohol or any, any kind of thing that's detrimental to your system where you feel impacted by it negatively. It's like, okay, well, then limit your intake, you know? So I'm hearing, I don't know if you're hearing the background, but I'm hearing the gang wanting me to get a move on. So I'm going to leave it at that, a contemplation on authenticity, what it means to be the real you, the real me, the real, showing the real, even though it's scary as hell, because there is a 100% chance of judgment. 100% chance, even if it's unconscious in the minds of others because we're judgmental beings looking for problems, we're looking for things to solve, we're looking, we're analyzing, we're analytical. But that's fine because that doesn't need to become who we are. Somebody else's judgment doesn't have to become who we are. And we need to find ways to insulate against it. And some of the ways to do that are distancing, are creating some sort of boundaries around that person, whether it's physical proximity, emotional proximity, what you share with them, frequency of contact. All of those things can create a nice insulation against the feeling of allowing that person too close in. And then, of course, there are, oh, there are all kinds of like meditations or grounding techniques or like visualizations as well where you can kind of visualize ways like things around you or kind of get yourself you kind of get your head in the game before you see somebody that you know is kind of triggering and frustrating or that you seek to please or you feel judged by and I think journaling or talk therapy is another really cool thing like I mean talk therapy like just talking it out with yourself like I know it's kind of a weird thing to talk to yourself but actually Doing a voice note and just talking to yourself, kind of like I am right now, is such a brilliant way. Once we say things out loud, there's some phenomenal thing that goes on in our mind where we just kind of sort things out. We kind of tease out the details and sort it out and clarify it in our minds. And I think there's something so brilliant about doing that. So whatever the way that you kind of parse through these challenging relationships or environments, (laughs) I wish you absolute patience and gentleness with yourself it's so easy to beat ourselves up not worth it not worth it so i wish you patience and a gentle approach and grace as you continue to figure out how you want to show up in the world and i hope you'll extend the same grace to me as i figure out how i show up too thanks so much for being here with me today and listening, hearing me out, and I'll see you again soon. Actually, stay tuned for an episode with an amazing doctor coming soon. You're going to love it. I think it'll be the next episode or maybe the next, next episode, so stay tuned. And if you feel called, support the show. I've got the link in the episode notes. It means a lot when you buy me a cup of coffee so I can keep doing this show. Once again, thank you for being here, and I wish you an amazing week, and we'll see you again soon.